Roll up, roll up. It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Here we go with chapter 9, lesson number 4, area above and below the X axis. Let's start off with an example. So we've got this curve here, y equals x squared minus 4. And if we want to work out the shaded area, Grace, what would you use? Integration! Yes, so you would integrate. We are going to integrate that then. The limits are going to be 2 and negative 2. 2 being the upper limit, negative 2 being the lower limit. Integrating that then, integrate x squared, we would end up with x cubed over 3. Integrate the negative 4, we get negative 4x. Sub in the limits. If you're unsure about that, look back to the last lesson. If you simplify it slightly, simplify it again, we end up getting down to dun, 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 negative 32 over 3. Three. Arr, arr. What does that mean? We've got a negative. You can't get a negative area. Look at Adam's face. He's very confused. What does this mean? Well, obviously, the area is not going to be negative. But sometimes when we're integrating, if you integrate an area that's below the x-axis, you will end up with a negative answer. What do you do in these cases? It's nice and easy. You ignore the negative. So, the area for this example would just be 32 over 3. So the rule is just ignore the negative. If you calculate by integration an area that is above the x-axis, well the answer is going to be positive. You will get a positive number for your area. If you integrate and you get the area below the x-axis, well, your answer will be negative. So that is where you would just ignore the negative. Let's try an example then. So if you worked out this shaded area, so we can see here we've got our function. It's the x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x. We've got area 1, area 2. Let's just work out the whole thing. Uh, we're wanting the area that starts at 0 and it ends at 2. So we're going to integrate between 0 and 2. If you integrate that then, you would get x to the power of 4 over 4 minus, that would be 3x cubed over 3, which is just x cubed, and then that would be 2x squared over 2, which would give us x squared. Work that out then, we'd end up with that if you sub in your limits, the 2 and the 0, which would mean then the total area would be 0. What? It's not zero. It's clearly not zero. You can see it's not zero. We've got our area here. We've got area one and area two. Mamma mia. What do you do then? Well, the area above the x-axis is going to be positive, but the area below the x-axis is going to be a negative. What does that mean then? Well, in this example, they're going to cancel each other out. One's a positive, one's a negative. You add them together, we're just getting, in this example, zero which is clearly wrong. So what do you do then when part of your function, if part of the graph is above the x-axis and part is below, well, you have to split it up. So when working out an area and part is above the x-axis and part is below, we have to work out the two areas separately and then add them together at the end. Let's try that one more time then. So example one, work out this shaded area. Again, you can see part is above, and part is below, so you have to work them out separately. So let's integrate then. Let's integrate the x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x. But let's just integrate this bit first. We'll go with the area 2. So between 2 and 1. Integrate that. Same as the last page. You just get x to the power of 4 over 4 minus x cubed plus x squared. But the limits are just going to be 2 and 1 because we're just taking this area 2 that is below the x axis. If you work that out then, sub in the limits, sub in 2, then subtract, and sub in 1. Work that out, you get 0 minus quarter, which gives us then, whoops, you would get minus 1 quarter. What does that mean then? What's the area going to be? 1 quarter, perfect. Ignore the negative, so the area for area 2 will just be 1 quarter. Do the same thing for area 1. So you're integrating for that one, and your limits are going to be 0 and 1. 0 is the lower limit, 1 is the upper limit. Work that out. You're going to integrate. You've still got the limits. Sub in 1 and 0. Again, if you're not sure about that, just look at the last uh, lesson. 
Work that out and you end up with one quarter, meaning then that area one will be one quarter. How would you work out the total area? What would you do, Valley? Add them, perfect. So to work out the total area, just take area one, area two, and add them together. So a quarter plus a quarter is just a half. And again, if you're not given units, you just write squared units on the end. Let's try example two. So work out the shaded area. So this time, again, we have our function. You've got the curve y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x plus 1. And you can see the graph is crossing over the x-axis. And really, the area that we want is starting at 0 here, then it crosses at 1, and then really the end that we want is going to be 2. But because part of your graph is above the x-axis and part is below, Connor, what do you do? Work them out separately. Oh, man is a genius. So, work them out. Let's work out this bottom area first of all, so between 2 and 1. If you work that out, you integrate the x cubed minus xx squared plus 4x plus 1. Integrate that. If you're unsure about the integration, again, look back at another lesson. Sub in the limits. Again, look back at another lesson. And if you work that out, you would end up with negative 2 minus 1 and a quarter, which gives us negative 3 and a quarter. Meaning then, obviously, the area will not be negative. That makes no sense whatsoever. So you would say after that that the area would equal, just take the number, ignore the negative, so the area is 3 and 1 quarter. Work out the other area. So the area that is above the x-axis is between 1 and 0. So we're integrating our function and using the limits 1 and 0. Integrate that. x to the power of 4 over 4 minus 2x cubed plus 2x squared plus x. The limits, we've got 1 and 0. Just keep them there. After that, sub them in. So sub in 1 in place of x, then minus. Sub in 0 in place of x. Well, if you do that, you just get 0, take 0, plus 0, plus 0, which is 0. So you could just write down 0. Just be very careful if you do, though, because if you have, say, a plus 7 on the end there or anything like that, then it will not give you 0. So just always check that you will actually end up with 0. From there, you will end up with 1 and a quarter. And so the area is just 1 and a quarter for that other area. Total area, valley once again. Add them together. So the total area, area one, add area two. So we've got the one and a quarter, add three and a quarter, which will give us four and a half squared units. Example three. Find the points of intersection of the curve y equals x cubed minus nine x with the x axis. And for B, calculate the area enclosed by the curve and the x-axis. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find the points of intersection between that curve and the x-axis. How would you do that? Chelsea, what would you do? Good, replace y with 0. Because we know on the x-axis, y is going to be 0. So the graph crosses the x-axis when y is 0. As Chelsea says, you replace that. So your x cubed minus 9x would equal 0. And to solve that, what would you do to solve that, Ms. Amal? Factorise, brilliant. So take out the highest common factor, which will be x. So you'd have x bracket, x squared minus 9. After that, Ms. Amal, what could you do? Factorise again, brilliant. So you've got x bracket, x add 3, bracket, x minus 3. Because you're multiplying them all together, set each one equal to 0, meaning then that x would equal 0. x add 3 equals 0 giving you x is negative 3, and x take 3 is 0, giving you x equals 3. The points of intersection then, that's your x values. You know the y value is going to be 0, so the points of intersection would be negative 3, 0, 0, 0, and 3, 0. So that would be part A. How would you work out the area enclosed by the curve and the x-axis? Well, for this, because you've got these points of intersection, there's a good chance that the graph is crossing over your x-axis. So part will be above and part will be below. So if you ever get that, you're best just splitting them up. So in order, you'd have negative 3, 0, and 3. So work out the area between negative 3 and 0, and work out the area between 0 and 3, and then add them together. So let's do that. So, those are your points of intersection. Integrate your function, but just work it out between, we'll go with 3 and 0 first of all. So integrate x cubed minus 9x. If you do that, you would end up with x to the power of 4 over 4. Minus, 
9x squared over 2. Keep the limits. We've got 3 and 0. Sub the limits in, you'd end up with 81 over 4 minus 81 over 2. Take away 0, giving you then negative 81 over 4. But remember, the area cannot be a negative. It doesn't make sense. So you could say the area of the first part, area 1, would be 81 over 4. Do the exact same thing for the other one. So you're wanting to integrate. We worked it out between 3 and 0. So now work out between 0 and negative 3. Doing that, you're integrating between 0 and negative 3. That's the upper limit. That's the lower limit. Smaller number is at the bottom. If we integrate, we're still getting the same thing as over here. Sub in the 0 and the negative 3. So if you sub in 0, you'd end up just with 0. Um, and if you sub in the negative 3, you'd end up with 81 over 4. Take 81 over 2, giving you then 81 over 4, which means the area of the second part would be 81 over 4. And valley one more time, what do you do to get the total? Yes, you add them together. So the total area would be area 1 plus area 2. So you've got 81 over 4, add 81 over 4, which is 162 over 4. You could simplify that down and you'd end up with 40 and a half or 40.5 squared units. That is how you would do it. But the key points to take from that is if you've got a part of the graph that's above the x-axis and part that's below, split it up so you're working uh, out above, then work out the area below and then add them together. As usual, any problems, just ask me in class or send me an email. Good luck.